Hey everybody, Fishman here, welcome to another video. This is Fishman Blog number 19, though pretty much it's going to be an extension of last Wednesday's video. This is going to be mostly or almost exclusively about setting up the rest of the tanks for the plant experiment with the three different substrates. Now, I had a little bit of confusion with this particular setup here. Some people thought that box was meant to have plants uh, planted in it and have them grow in there, like the rooted ones. But that's not its purpose at all. There's actually going to be other uh, acrylic boxes in what's the back of the tank now, but in actuality, this is the back of the tank, so uh, they'll be in the front in the empty space you see there. And in those chambers, I'm going to have soil uh, capped with uh, some gravel, and the rooted plants are going to go in that, or in them, I should say, because there'll be more than one. The purpose of this particular chamber here is solely to allow nutrient to get into the water column and because soil is soil there's also going to be some tannic acids getting in there and that's going to be my kind of my barometer for this uh, depending on how much that um, leaches out that way will give me an idea of how much this is working because this is going to sit as you see here right on top of the underground filter and because of the nature of underground filters uh, water is going to be drawn down through that entire bed and a small amount of that is going to result in uh, water flowing through all that soil there. So it is going to add a little bit of nutrient to the tank. As you can see here, the water is also turning a little bit in the way. It's like some tannic acids are already leaching out, and that's what I'm looking for. So nothing else has been done to this yet. I left this particular, uh, well, deliberately bare like this because I wanted to see, first off, if there's going to be any kind of... Uh, chemistry issues with this. I have the original pair of hyphen platies I bought a long time ago. Uh, they're in here, uh, along with a bunch of uh, shrimp. Shrimp are very sensitive to this sort of thing, so if there were any kind of issues, uh, uh, well, they would show signs, and they are. So uh, I'm not too worried about that now, so I can actually get on to uh, doing the rest of this. So that chamber there, like I said, is doing what it needs to do. And the reason why I didn't uh, set it up the same way as the commercial plant growth substrate is because this, that substrate there is better designed, so granular, and it allows water to flow through better, even though I did have some issues with it in the last setup uh, getting a little bit plugged up. If I had put uh, a mesh on the bottom of this, a layer of soil, and then a layer of gravel uh, to imitate that, I don't think I would get enough filtration for this to work properly, and I didn't want to have any kind of filtration issues with this. I want it to work as best as possible. So that's the reason why I'm setting this up like this. And now what I need to do now is set up the rest of it. And that is to set up the high humidity planters that are going to go above each of those underground filters. Now this is pretty much standard now. Uh, there's not much I do differently for these anymore. I did uh, do one little uh, change up for this uh, particular setup. Each of these three filters is going to have a front plate like this, which is going to have four lower holes where, uh, under normal operation, the water is going to flow back into the tank. And then I put in four holes at a higher level, uh, not so much because I'm concerned at all about overflowing, because any water that goes out of this just goes straight back into the tank, because these are all set inside. Uh, so that's not an issue at all. But I thought I'd put them in there as an indicator uh, to when the upper part of the tank filtration system is getting not so much plugged up, uh, except possibly, you know, with plants. But as the flow is uh, restricted by, well, plants and that sort of stuff, and roots start growing up the holes, as you've seen before, uh, the water level will raise up. And those are going to be my indicator holes. Just something I want to try, just to try something different with each of these. And I didn't bother showing you the glue up for this because I want to show you how one gets installed. Uh, obviously I'm putting three on, but I'm not going to show you all three. Uh, so I'm going to pick one of the tanks and I'm going to, uh, first off, of course, build the boxes. I'm going to, I'll go on top of these and then I'm going to install these onto each of the tanks and you get to see one of them. It is a very simple method for working with these things. And... The reason why I'm really getting to like this is, well, the modularity of it all. I don't even know if that's a word. Anyway, the modular concept of this is uh, something that's really important for basically how I do things in the fish room now. This tank here is the one that has been set up 
uh, for that underground filter to run properly. It lifts that goes to the surface, uh, and then the water shoots across the sur on the top, and that is uh, a standard setup for an underground filter. Now, this is how difficult this is to convert to high humidity planter on top. And that is just to put a, a an extension tube. It uh, just brings it up a little bit higher, and I do an awful lot of fiddling around, as you probably already know, uh, with my filtration systems, trying different things out, seeing what I like, and seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. And then uh, this way, I don't disturb anything when I am uh, trying something different. This is how simple this is to install. And if I were to put something else on top of this instead, it is exactly as easy to uninstall. So this just slides down on top. Uh, just to take a second or two to find the hole, and then it just drops down. That's it. And then it's in position. All I need to do now on top of this is because the lift stack is a little bit taller now, is extend the rigid airline tubing, and and that's it. It's done. And I put it back. Put the air back on it, and uh, it's ready to function. Now I'm not going to put any plants in this today, uh, mostly because I don't want to keep this. Well, I want to keep this video reasonably short, uh, but also because I still want to give people a chance to pick plants. I've already got a number of suggestions, and thank you very much for all those. Uh, but with all the current situations, uh, availability may be an issue. So uh, the more choices I have, the better. So if you don't mind, just uh, leave some suggestions below, and that would be great. So yeah, I'm gonna hook these up. Uh, get all of them running uh, over the weekend and then I'm going to start planting them and then uh, will obviously be the long wait until uh, things start to change and grow and uh, do the things they need to do uh, and I'll do updates. Most of the updates will be in uh, the fish room blogs uh, but I will definitely do a final uh, overview for everything for sure uh, once, well, once there is some kind of result at all and then these will probably continue to run. There is no real reason to take them all apart or anything, except possibly this one here, because the last time I ran an underground filter uh, with this substrate, it gradually slowed down. It does have a very fine uh, pore, or void volume, whatever you want to call it, and as it matures, it tends to slow down. Uh, the water doesn't flow through it as well, and that could alter how the water goes to the upper chamber where the high humidity is and so I'll have to keep an eye on that. But the other two uh, will run perfectly fine. They're underground filters. I mean the one with the soil. It's a simple matter to take that chamber out and just uh, have it run normally. Uh, so if that becomes an issue that's fine. But even then half of it still runs as an under, just a straight underground filter. So again I don't think there'll be any issues either of those two. And then as you can see, these tie in really nicely to the modular lids I have. And that is also a big plus too. So I'm going to just show you here uh, quickly a couple close-ups of this running, and that's pretty much the end of this video. Uh, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe, and definitely I'll be keeping up with updates on this for sure. And there you go. It runs smoothly. And, well, it should. It's brand new and it flows really quite nicely. And you see the front lid uh, just slides up against it. Uh, there is another lid that goes uh, on this as well. I still am a little bit behind on making them, uh, but I have to because I want to do a bit of a video on uh, controlling humidity in a fish room, and I need to have a few more lids to do that with. Uh, so I'll get to that as well on top of that. So there you go. The uh, last clip is just going to be I'm going to pull, uh, slide that lid forward so you can see the water flowing through the holes. And you can see the upper holes uh, won't have any water going through them at all until this gets dirty. So there you go. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video, and bye for now. Actually, I almost forgot to mention, uh, there does seem to be a fair amount of interest in those feeding rings. So I'm going to try and make as many as I can. If I can make enough for everybody, that'd be great. Otherwise, what I'll do is just have a small amount of a draw for it. I'll announce it again, but most likely I'll do something for it in next week's uh, Fish Room blog if I find time this week to take care of all that. Uh, but we'll see how that all goes. So, now, bye for now.